the Saiyans and why they weren't the strongest in the universe, even though we can take a look at Goku and Vegeta and plainly see that they are ridiculously powerful. Some of the strongest beings in the universe coming from uh, a, a group of aliens that were really laughed at by Frieza and his minions. Um, I mean, they were like middle tier guys. Um, so why, why is it that uh, the, the strongest guys probably to ever live came out of such a mediocre warrior race? Um, and I say mediocre because uh, in, in the, the scope of the universe, yeah, sure, they're tough. But when you weigh them against guys like Zarbon and Dodoria and uh, the Ginyu Force... Uh, there, there really isn't any comparison. Any one of those guys could have demolished any, any number of Saiyans um, outside of being transformed. Um, so, so why was that? Why was it the case that the Saiyans did never really get anywhere strength-wise? Alright, well, look, first of all, let's take a look at their biology. Saiyan biology is such that when they're greatly injured uh, and they heal from it, they get a power boost. And that that's an amazing ability. It's essentially using the power of evolution to, to raise your strength. Um, and I imagine that being a warrior race, that's just a natural thing that happened in their evolutionary process. You have a bunch of people that are constantly killing each other killing other species on their planet. Um, it stands to reason that in, they also live on a, a, ten, a 10 times gravity planet. Um, it stands to reason that they would be strong. Um, it stands to reason that they uh, would have uh, the ability to recover very quickly because if they didn't have the, cover, the power to recover very quickly, and not only that, but get stronger in that recovery, uh, they would be easily wiped out from the people that they would be fighting, i.e. themselves. Uh, so it's just it's just a natural part of their biology. However, due to that factor, due to the factor that they just get stronger through fighting and being injured and healing, uh, they you don't really see any Saiyans training. Training seems to be a completely foreign concept to the Saiyans. When you see Nappa and Vegeta talking about becoming stronger. Uh, they really only reference fighting. When they are looking for the Dragon Balls, uh, Vegeta asks Nappa, how would you like to fight forever? And really that, that's where it seems like the majority of their power increases come from, is just entering into battle repeatedly. That is backed up by Bardock uh, talking about how strong he is because he's constantly been in battle. He always ends up in the rejuve tank and so he has a ridiculous amount of power because he's always getting beat down. So there's there's not really this culture of training in the Saiyan race. Um, there's battle and that sure gets them strong because whenever they recover they get that Zenkai boost but Unfortunately, in a, in a culture where you live and breathe battle on a daily basis, your lifespan is not very long. So they stay youthful for a long period of time so that they can fight. But I really don't imagine very many Saiyans living past 40. I imagine the majority of Saiyans uh, would, would meet their end sometime before that just due to constantly being in battle. And sure, the, the guy who is the king is probably really, really strong because he's, he's managed to fight his way to the top. Um, but in the process of doing that, he's eliminated all of his rivals, all of his strong enemies, and therefore has no one to test himself against and to grow stronger. Let's take a look at a different culture, and that is the culture of Earthlings. 
Earthlings are naturally very weak. If you look at Earthlings in the in the cosmos, we are massively underpowered. We are completely outmatched. Uh, the strongest people on our planet don't even come close to aliens. Um, yeah, not anywhere near what it would take to to even probably fight some of Frieza's smallest underlings. However, due to our weak nature, we have a culture of training. We train our asses off. We learn martial arts. We learn crazy techniques that do all kinds of stuff. As a matter of fact, Master Roshi has so many freaking techniques. And fortunately, um, because of our weakness, we have the ability to make all these different techniques. Uh, like the Kamehameha and the uh, Dodampa and the uh, uh, Zanzoken, Taioken. So, I mean, lots of different stuff that would be uh, useful in battle that proved useful. For instance, the Taioken solar flare. God, that was useful all the way up through Frieza. I mean, Krillin used that on Frieza, one of like an early freaking technique. Speaking of Krillin, Krillin also invented a technique that can cut enemies in half that are super, super strong. So, even though humans are ridiculously weak as far as sheer power, we train, which means that we can push ourselves to new limits, and we have a massive amount of, of ingenuity and this desire to create new techniques and that really pushes us to be able to stand with with races that may want to hurt us now mind you even even with the massive amount of training uh tian yamcha krillin they were no match for the saiyans when they showed up uh, but they were able to fight the cybermen they were able to to bring themselves to a higher level of uh, power it's, they were really just held back by their biology. Um, the Saiyans, however, were not held back by their biology. They were held back by their culture. And when you have the combination of human culture and Saiyan biology, present in Goku and later in Vegeta, we get two massively powerful beings because Goku and Vegeta later, abandoned this whole concept of being in constant battle in favor of learning how to fight and learning techniques and training their bodies physically without having to be in a life or death situation. Now, while for a Saiyan, being in a life or death situation can be an enormous power-up, some of the biggest power-ups that happen in Dragon Ball Z happen because of that Zenkai boost. Uh, but it's more dangerous. If you have to almost die every time you want to get stronger, the risk of you actually dying uh, is pretty high. So you're going to end up with uh, that same situation that I was talking about before where you have a bunch of people that are fighting to get stronger and a, a lot of them die. And because a lot of them die, they never reach their full potential. However, that is not the case when you throw Goku in the midst of humanity. Because being of that Saiyan biology, he gets that boost of power whenever he gets beat down or coming close to death. But he also responds very well to very intense training. And because he responds very well to that intense training, he's able to use the benefit of his Saiyan biology and the benefit of human culture to his advantage. When Vegeta himself uh, takes that same philosophy, he begins to see the most massive power increases of his entire life. You can also see the, the culture of battle as training um, when it shows Vegeta training with the Cybermen. Um, he's not learning how to push himself via exercises. He's not um, learning techniques. They put him in a room with several Cybermen and 
he his job was to kill them. And it, the other the other aspect that you can see that there is no culture of training is that once they were introduced to Frieza and became cosmic uh, mercenaries, so to speak, uh, they were sent to planets as babies or children um, and just to, to be set loose on the planet. Uh, there wasn't any prep. There's no training. There's just this is a strong baby, strong child that will grow up stronger than the species on this planet and will demolish it. Um, and if it can't demolish it via its uh, own natural abilities, then the process of um, the full moon will take care of itself. That's another thing. You can see that in their, their the way once they get scouters and they uh, assess classifications of Saiyans. They're based on their power levels. You have third class, first class, whatever Saiyans. Um, you can see that uh, based in that that whole classification thing. They look at a baby when it's born, they see its power level, and they rank it, which means that they believe that your potential is decided the moment you are born. They don't... And, and you're, you're pigeonholed into that whole concept of being, uh, you know, elite or common based on your birth. So they don't have a concept of rising to the top through training because I imagine the weakest uh, were probably snuffed out pretty early. Um, kind of think like uh, Spartans. Uh, if, if you had any kind of defect, you were killed. Uh, I imagine the very weakest of the Saiyans, uh, if they weren't sent off to planets, um, I imagine they didn't survive for very long. Uh, and so you, you can definitely see that, that bit of culture in that, that class system that, that the Saiyans have. So the question of why the Saiyans were not the strongest in the universe... When they had the potential to be, we see they have the potential to be with Super Saiyan and all of its various forms uh, and the whole concept of the Super Saiyan God. Uh, the answer is really found in their culture. And unless they were exposed to outside culture, uh, they probably would have turned into nothing but a, 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 a series of uh, barbarians, mind you, mildly strong barbarians, but they wouldn't have gotten anywhere. And uh, you can find a very interesting version of this in Dragon Ball Multiverse when you have the Saiyans uh, that don't have Frieza. Um, they're absolutely horribly weak. Because, yeah, they're a warrior race, uh, but they don't have anybody to really push them, and they don't have that culture of training like the humans do in order to make themselves strong. Uh, so, it's, it's a really interesting concept. Uh, I, I really enjoyed talking about it. I'll see you guys next time on Anime Training Theory. Good luck and train hard.